An adjustment layer allows us to experiment with color and tonal adjustments in an image without permanently modifying the pixels in the image. These changes reside within the adjustment layer, which acts as a screen through which the underlying image layers appear. When we create an adjustment layer, its adjustments will affect all of the layers below it. This will allow us to correct multiple layers with a single adjustment, rather than having to make adjustments to each layer. Before we get started, let's close all the open images by clicking their close buttons. We'll answer no to the save changes prompts. For this demonstration, we'll need to load the image 1 PSD file. This is done by pressing the Ctrl plus O and double-clicking Image 1 PSD from the list of files. After clicking on the Layers tab, we can see the various layers that make up this image. The top layer is a border. Notice the italic F which appears next to the layer name. This indicates that a layer effect has been applied. Layer effects are new for Photoshop 5 and we'll discuss them more in a moment. The next layer is titled Hue Saturation and is an adjustment layer which adjusts the hue and saturation of the layers below. To see the settings for this layer, we double-click the half-filled circle to the far right of the layer name. We now see the Hue Saturation dialog box. Here we can edit the hue, saturation, and lightness with the sliders. When we drag the slider for the hue, notice the spectrum bar at the bottom adjusts to illustrate how the colors will be shifted. According to the spectrum, all red hues will now be blue, blue hue will be green, and green hues will be red. Let's drag the slider back to 40 and click OK. Another new feature for the adjustment layer is the ability to apply a mask, much the same way we would apply a layer mask to any other layer. Currently the mask for this layer is active. To disable the mask we right click the layer name. Then select Disable Layer Mask from the shortcut menu. Now the entire image is affected. We also see a red X across the thumbnail for the layer. We do not want the entire image affected by this adjustment layer, but we do want the text to be affected by the adjustment layer. Because the text is in the previous layer to the adjustment layer, we can simply group the adjustment layer with the previous layer and only the text will be affected. To do this, we open the Layer menu and select Group with Previous. The colors for the graphics on this image can be changed back to normal, but the text stay the same. Let's press Ctrl plus S to save our changes. Let's see what other types of adjustment layers can be applied. We click the arrow on the edge of the Layers palette, then select New Adjustment Layer from the Flyout menu. The New Adjustment Layer dialog box appears. Click the drop-down arrow next to Type to see what types of adjustments can be made. We see Levels, Curves, Brightness Contrast, Color Balance, Hue Saturation, Selective Color, Channel Mixer, Invert, Threshold, and Posturize. Many of these are the same adjustments that can be made through the Image menu. However, we can change these settings at any time while we are working on our project. We'll click outside the list to close it. Let's click the Cancel button to close this dialog box. The Layer Effects command is similar to a filter, except like the Adjustment layer, it is editable at any time. Some of these effects include Outer Glow, Inner Bevel, Emboss, and Drop Shadow. Previously, these types of effects were only available as plugins and could not be changed once they were applied. As we mentioned before, the italic F indicates a layer effect has been applied to a layer or a portion of a layer. Layer effects can be added to any layer, including adjustment layers. Let's take a look at the effects applied to the Photoshop layer by clicking on it. To see the controls for the effects, we double-click the italic F next to the layer name. We now see the effects dialog box. We see that a drop shadow has been applied to this layer. 
we can adjust the mode, opacity, angle, distance, blur, intensity, and color of the shadow. Since we no longer want this effect, simply click the checkbox next to apply and the effect is removed. Let's click the drop down arrow next to drop shadow. We see all the effects we can apply to a layer. Drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, and bevel emboss. Let's select outer glow. We can see that this effect has been applied also. Let's click OK to close this box. We can apply as many effects as we want to each layer. We can also apply different effects to different parts of a layer simply by creating a selection, then applying the effect. 